Welcome to topic number five. We're going to begin to talk about exponential functions. Oh, no word rational, just exponential, sorry. Exponential functions and something called the logarithmic functions, okay? These, these type of function is called the transcendental functions also in, in calculus class, all right? So what is an exponential function? We know what an, ex, ex, you know, we, 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 you might have learned about, you know, you might have learned about and we also review about your exponents before, okay? So what's considered as an exponential function is where the variable, your variable x is now gonna be on the exponents with a base that is greater than zero, not equal to one because one to any power is still one. All right, and we always denote your exponential function as some sort of base A raising to the X power, okay? Some, some sort of base A raising to the raising to the x power. So since the variable is on the exponent, so as x go to infinity, as x gets larger, 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 the y value will increase very, very rapidly. Okay, for all the bases that's greater than one. So this picture right here on the right side, I got base four, base 2.5, base 1.8, all raising to the x power. Okay, so these are called exponential functions. So the, that means these exponents, these y value will, will actually shoot up very, very quickly. Now, if your base is, is between zero and one, look at the picture. This is actually going from the other way, okay? So these are called exponential functions. Uh, a lot of times, exponential function, I'm not gonna do talk about any application problem, you know, but exponential functions is used for invest investments, okay? If you invest money in the stock markets, um, the, the math behind it is an exponential, it's a type of exponential function. When you're talking about population increase, okay, population increase, any type of population increase is considered as an exponential type of function, okay? Um, population decrease uh, is is a is actually a type of is actually a type of um, exponential function. Now, you know, with us just 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 kind of coming off the pandemic, okay. You really gotta think about this. During the pandemic, it you know the 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 virus is spreading, right? The virus is spreading. When when would it stop? My question is, when would it stop? No, because no. because the spreading is an exponential explosion. Okay, it go from two p. It can go from two people, and then what? to four people, so then when more people are infected, then what, more and more people are what, infected. If you start with two people, right, then the next time you know it is two to the second power is four, two to the third power is eight, right? Two to the what, fourth power is 16. So you see, you keep on spreading like that, you know? So those are type of exponential. So when will, this when would the virus stop spreading ask yourself have you took the vaccine yet right if you were healthy before let's say you never had let's say you never caught caught the virus and you took a and you took the vaccine do you have coronavirus You have a dead one. <laughs> you have one that is not active in your system. So sadly to say, pandemic will stop when everybody is infected. Either it was with a live virus or with a dead virus. Because if you're vaccinated, now you can still you might still be able to catch it, but the point is, you know, pandemic only stops spreading when everybody has it. The vaccine just help us to what to fight against it, but you already has that in your in your body, all right. Or people that have anti, you know, you know, people who have strong antibody, you know, they can actually what not getting what not getting infected, all right. Population increase that's that's that's, that's on virus, okay. There's actually, uh, these y value goes up forever, but things like pandemic is a type of exponential function, but it will eventually cap off. 
you actually eventually the level off. The level off simply implies everybody that should get infected got infected, plus the ones that have antibody that will never get you know immune to it. Those people will never catch it. So eventually, once you reach a certain population, you actually you actually cap off. Okay. Um, population increase can also be like talking about um, like deers, um, deer in the in in the in the woods in the forest. Um, you know that's the reason why here. You know there are there are seasons where 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 people can get permits to hunt deer and things like that. Um, part of it is for population controls. Okay, because they're natural because deer's natural um, deer's natural enemy might not be around anymore. Okay, because because human actually hunt those predators. So there, so when you have less, you know, when the deer has le less natural enemies, then human can actually, you know, you know, keep a population in check. Okay, to actually, you know, to actually hunt them for sports or for food, whatever. Okay, so hunting season is actually is actually a season for population control also. Otherwise, deer population would just continue to grow, grow, grow. If you ever had a rabbit at home, if you ever have a one rabbit that you just let it go outside in the yard and bringing another rabbit, two rabbits, one male, one female. Okay, if you're not careful, that population will go out of control. If you know anything about rabbits, you know, woof, they can reproduce very fast. All right. So if a population is not in check, okay, that thing will just keep on being exploded. So a lot of people is thinking, okay, human population keep on increasing without bound. You see, pandemic viruses has a bound they will eventually level off will the human population li ever level off or it will keep on going more people means more resources that 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 you know that is needed and who are humans natural enemy to to keep our population in check Okay, those things, you know, those things, you know, people got to think about. No, nobody's preying on us. Our population is not being checked. All right, so I'm going to grab these two functions. Okay, I'm not really going to ask you too much about domain and range and things like that, because as keep on as X keep on going to the right, you know, your function, your, your domain is actually from negative infinity to infinity, but I want to grab some of these functions just to show you the difference. So be very careful, okay? Be very careful what is on your exponent. This is two to the x plus one power. So base two, exponent. Your exponent has two terms, so it's best to put them in the parentheses or keep them. All right, so if your syntax is a little bit different than mine, so make sure your x plus one is on the exponent. So that's what it looked like. Let me go back to a standard window. All right, two to the X plus one minus one. So this minus one is actually not on the exponent. So I put the X plus one in the parentheses. So if I want to add in the minus one, I write the minus one will be outside the parentheses to indicate that that's not part of the exponents, okay? So the minus one is basically like a vertical shift. So I'll, my function will shift down one places, okay? This part right here, shift it down one places. And if you look on the table, these Y values just keep on going up, keep on going up. I always ask my students, okay, looking at this picture, I always ask my students, would you like to work for Mr. Chan for $2 an hour? Exponentially. Would you come work for me for two bucks an hour? 
Yes or no? Two thousand hour exponentially. Shauna, what do you think? Yes. You will come work for me for two dollars an hour, and I pay you exponentially. Yes, sir. <laughs> Anybody else will do it? I mean, I'm not. I'm not even going to tell you what what we're going to do, okay? And no benefit, by the way. No benefit. We are doing something so satisfying for you. Good job. Anybody else will come work for Mr. Chen? Exponential function. If you look on the table, you work one hour, you work Y value is the dollar, okay? X is hours of work. You work for six hours, you make $64. Seven hours, at the end of the day, you get paid 128. Eight hours, one day, you get paid $256. So if you come back the next day, if you work 16 hours, you get paid 65 grand. That's, that's the power of exponential function. It takes time, but it will eventually, uh, the Y value eventually shoots up very good. So when x equal to 40, can you imagine when x equal to 40, this is 1.1, e means times 10 to the 12 power. 1.1 times 10 to 12 power. The 12 means, I move this decimal to the right 12 times. Okay, so that's the power of exponential function. The number e, the number E is an irrational number. It's an irrational number. It's about 2.718 something. It's named by this mathematician called Lenar Euler back in 1741. We're gonna use this number E as another base. Okay, we're gonna use it as another base. So, I'm gonna kind of mention this to you real quick. On the graphing calculator, on your graphing calculator, okay, it's not the letter E. E is, a, e is a mathematical function. So here, right beside um, number four, you see this button called LN, and right above it, you see something called E to the X power, okay? So if you go to Y equal right now, and do second E to the X, and in the parentheses, just put in the X in there. Okay, that E means 2.71A something, that's your base. We're using the number E as another type of base, okay? So that gives you about this way. I'm gonna draw you a darker one with two to the X and you can see the difference. One of them is two to the X, one of them is 2.7 something to the X power. I'm gonna make this second line a little bit darker so you can see it's, it's about the same. Okay, it's about the same. All right, so that's what they're using base E as another type of base. All right, well, this E will be talked about a little bit more here in a minute. Now, this particular topic also, other than the graph, I, I also want to show you a little bit of arithmetic. So these are called the exponential equations, okay? These are exponential equations. Base exponent property. What this thing is saying is, when the base are the same and the base are being equal to each other, what you can do is set their exponent equal to each other. When the base are the same and base are equal, you can set the exponents equal to each other. So one of the ways to solve for exponential equation is try to make the base the same, all right? So I'm gonna isolate my X, but, uh, my four to the X power by moving negative four over. So I got four X equal to 64. I want to apply this base exponent property. I want the base to be the same so I can set the exponent equal to each other and I can, then I can solve. So a lot of this is, is, is your exponent rule, kind of look at them backwards a little bit. 64, how can 64 become base four? 
Well, turns out 64 is actually four to the third power. Four to the third power is 64. So 4x equal to four to the third power. I'm just changing four, 64 to four to the third power. When the base are the same and the base are equal, we set their exponent equal to each other. Therefore, x equal to three. That's how we find them. This example on the right, okay? Base two, two is a very, very, very good base to use. Four on the other side. Four can be written as two to the second power. But the exponent on the four is a negative four. So my two square, technically on the outside of two square, there's an exponent negative four. All right, so remember power rule. Remember power rule, A to the M, whole thing to the M power. Power rule normally tells me to multiply the exponents, right? If it's only one term inside the parentheses and you send outer power, you multiply the exponent, become a to the m times m power. And that's what we're going to do here. Okay, I can apply a power rule to say 4 to the negative 4 is the same as 2 to the negative 8 power. So the left side is 2 to the x squared plus 7x. The right side can be converted into 2 to the negative 8 power. So once the base are the same, base are equal, I set their exponent equal to each other. So now I'm actually end up with a quadratic equation that I need to solve. I'm gonna move the negative eight over. It becomes positive eight. Oh, this one is not very pretty, is it? Eight. Uh, this cannot be factored. One and eight will give me a nine in the middle, not seven in the middle. And I cannot use, I cannot say this is X and X. One and eight, you need a positive eight and minus one. Why this is wrong? Because my last, my Next. last sign, yeah, my last sign is not negative. It's positive. When the last sign is positive, the two sign in here got to be exactly the same. So I have to use quadratic formula to help me solve this. All right, coefficient A is one, B is seven, C is eight. Negative B plus minus square root of my B squared. Four times my A times my C, both terms over two times my A. Let's see what I got inside the parentheses real quick. Seventeen. Ah, seventeen cannot be broken down. So my answer is negative seven plus and minus square root of seventeen, both terms over two. All right. So I got two answers here. All right. Let's look at this one on the on the right. All right. Two third. Two and a three. You know, those are prime numbers. So those kind of bases. You know, is the minimum as you can get. As, as most base as you can get. But here I want to try to make this 27 over eight into two third. Okay, I'm gonna make my base into two third. So how do I do that? Well, let's think about it. 27 over eight, right? 27 I know is three to the third power. Eight is two to the third power. So remember, we talk about power rule, right? There's actually a version of power rule is A over B whole thing to the N power is A to the N over B to the N. This is the way we looked at it before. 
So imagine right now I have A to the N over B to the N in my problem. I want to take this, move it from here back to this form. Since both bases three and two is raising to the same power three, then I can actually bump these two exponents to the outside of parentheses as a third power. I can write it like that. I'm actually applying the power rule backwards. Well, I'm still not base two over three yet. This is three over two. So that means these guys got to be flipped. What we know about negative exponent is when the base has a negative exponent, we have to flip the base to the other side and make the and then make the exponent positive. Well, if I do it backwards, if I go backwards, that means whatever x whatever wherever my base is, if I will flip it back to the other side, wherever my base is, top or bottom, if I flip it back to the other side. I then can make the exponent into a negative. I, can, I need to change the sign of my exponent whenever I flip. So if I flip this base to the top, that base three to the bottom, then I become two over three, right? But since I actually flip all the bases, that means I will need to add the negative exponents back to it back to my exponent. I need to add that negative exponent back onto my exponent. And this is actually how we actually convert 27 over eight, okay, back into two over three for base. So, so all this time, there was an X on the very outside. So the right-hand side now becomes two over three raising to the negative three x power. Right, remember this x was there the whole time. I just didn't write it until the end. All right, the other side is two over three to the two x plus two. Once the base are the same, base are equal, I set the exponent equal to each other. And I solve for x. Move the negative three x to the left side, move the positive two to the right. Are you okay with me having 5x equal to negative 2, right? Negative become positive on the other side, right? 2 plus 3 is 5x. Divide both sides by 5, my answer, negative 2 over 5 is the answer. Now, this one on the right-hand side is a little bit, look, look a little bit strange, okay? By the way, um, I'll, it's obvious I will use base three. So let's find out three to the what power become 243. I know three to the third is 27. Three to the fourth is 81. Three to the fifth is 243. Okay, so this is three to the fifth power. No problem. The other side is a little bit weird. This is actually, if you look closely, when the base are the same and the base are multiplied, do you remember what do we normally do with the exponent? When the base are the same and the base are multiplying. When the base are the same and the base are multiplying, what do I do with the exponent? x squared times x to the third. What's the answer? x squared times x to the third. When the base are the same and the base are multiplying, what do I do with the exponent? We'd add them. So this right-hand side can be written as three to the two x plus one plus x. All right, now the base are the same, base are equal. I set the exponent equal to each other. So this is actually 3x equal to, move this over, that becomes 4 on the other side. x equals 4 over 3. Now 
Now this particular example, you will be obvious using six for base, okay? I'm gonna use base six. So right now the left side is not base six yet, it's one over six. So that means I need to flip this back to the top. If I flip it to the other side, you know what I'm saying? Because right now my exponent is positive one. So when I flip it back to the top, then my exponent will be negative. So if I flip it to the top, now it will be six to the negative x minus three over four. All right, let's look at this one over square root of six. One over square root of six. When we review the radicals, we say that, hey, you know, well, one can also be written as square root of one, by the way. Square root of one is one. So when we review the radical, we say that when the roots are the same and the roots are dividing, we can actually put both one, we can actually put both of them, what's inside of them, back under the same roots. Any nth root of a over b can be split into two radicals, nth root of a over nth root of b. Now we can, you know, so if that's true, then I can actually put them back together as one radical, one root. Okay. And the reason why I do that is, the reason why I put one and six under the same root is because square root, you remember when I asked this question before, square, you know, radicals convert into rational equation, excuse me, rational exponents. So this is a square root, right? I'm going to convert this into a fraction exponent. So square root of one over six is the same as one over six to the half power. Because remember, denominator determines the roots. The numerator one telling you your one over six, your base is raising to the one over, you know, raising to the one power. So now to make it into a base six, I gotta flip it to the other side. So that becomes six to the negative half power. Now, when the base are the same, then base are equal. I can then set the exponents equal to each other. All right, both of these fraction terms are negative. So I can multiply both terms by negative one. So they will all be positive. I can divide both terms by negative one, make them all positive, or I can just swap their position, move this to the right, move this to the left. Either way, you're gonna end up with both positive. Right? If you swap the order of these two terms, they would be remain to be positive. All right, so I'm going to use cross product again. Two times those two terms on top, that's 2x minus 6 equals 4 times 1 is 4. If I move the negative 6 over to the other side, that will be 2x equal to 10. So my x is equal to 5. That's my answer. All right, let's convert them into a base 6. Let's look at some homework. The number e is used as a base for exponential uh, modules. Okay, that's actually the way how we say it, modules. Different type of application, we use, you know, we use something we use base e. It is also considered as a irrational number. Okay, e is an irrational number. Question number two. Consider the following function, okay? Write your answer on the side before you key it in, okay? This is where it's hard for, for some students, okay? I'm forcing you to convert into certain bases. I want the two bases to end up to be two third, okay? So follow what I just show you here on, on the example, okay? I'm manipulate them a little bit to convert into, two, you know, to convert them into 
the base I want. So look at this example, how I convert it into base two over three. The reason why I have the reason why I had to flip them here is so that you know when I look at I know two and three is involved here with my base, but you end up three is on top, two in the bottom. So I gotta flip them in order to have a base two third. For our homework here, you will need to do the same thing. Well, two third, I think, yeah, for two third, the left side is, is actually pretty easy. The right side you'll have to flip. Okay. Let's you know why. That's you know why the answer here, the answer should look like one of the following. That's why there's a negative sign here, because because you will need to end up flipping. Okay, I'm very picky. I'm very strict about what the answer is supposed to look like when you enter it. Okay, so once you know, you know, I don't need you to distribute none of that. Okay, I want you to. I don't need you to distribute. I don't need you to. I do not need you to start simplifying the exponents because I want to. I want to see if we can make the base the same first and then set the exponent equal to each other before you start simplifying, okay, solve for x. Question number three, same thing, very similar to my one over square root of six. All right, but this time I want you to have, I want to use base one over two instead, okay? So convert this right side into a base one, uh, one over two for me. All right, so follow these steps. It will guide you on how to convert it. All right, so just real quick showing you what the exponential functions are and solving a basic, basic exponential equations. All right, so that will, that will conclude our video. Thank you for watching.